I like it so much because I'm a huge fucking dork. And I've always been really into uh, taking fashion risks, and they usually don't pay off, but uh, one time was absolutely the most legendary example of me making the worst fashion choice I could possibly make in a situation. And it was actually fifth grade, which you'd think there's not a lot of fashion pressure in fifth grade, but there totally is. <laughs> and I was, so fifth grade puts me at about 1993. And if any of you, especially the ladies in the crowd, it was remember amazing. the bodysuit? Oh God. Does anybody know what a bodysuit is? So, okay. For the dudes in the audience, a bodysuit, it's like um, a one-piece bathing suit, but it's got long sleeves, and you're supposed to wear it like a shirt. Like, it's a really tight-fitting, you know, spandex garment, and because it's so tight-fitting, they don't want it to ride up, so they give it a crotch with snaps, <laughs> like it's a fucking onesie, and you're supposed to, like, be able to change your diaper with the snaps, but I don't... I guess it makes it easier to go to the bathroom in a bodysuit, but if you're wearing the bodysuit, you're obviously more concerned with fashion than anything else. So, um, I had a bodysuit. It was a hand-me-down for my sister, and I thought that I was fucking style, and I wasn't the only one in my fifth grade class wearing a bodysuit, mind you, but, uh, one day I was feeling really adventurous, and I paired the bodysuit with an article of clothing that none of you have probably ever seen, and it's what I can only describe as Aladdin pants. So it's not like MC Hammer pants. It's uh, it's more pirate themed. Yeah, it's, Sinbad. It's yeah, yeah. It's like Sinbad. thank you. It's like white linen, which is always a good look for I had a fifth grader. First of all, yes, I'm glad there's somebody here. Yeah, I'm all. Oh, oh. Like what it when my mic dies as much switch. as I do. Switch. Switch. Yeah. switch. Hey, you just switched it. There you go. Totally. <laughs> okay. Um, lost all the momentum there. That's awesome. But so I had these Aladdin pants. They were white linen. They were knee length and they cinched up at the knee. They had like grommets in the front where they like laced up like pirate pants. And they cinched up at the knee and they were shaped like this. They like billowed like sails, very much like pirate sails. And um, I had this stroke of genius, and I paired the bodysuit with the Aladdin pants. And I wore it to school. I, like, laid it out the day before. I was super excited about it. I was like, I'm going to look so good, man. And <laughs> I fucking put it on that morning, and I'm strutting my way to the school bus, you know. And my friends, I get on the school bus, my friends are like, what the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you guys don't know. This is fashion forward, okay? You're going to be fucking wearing this in three weeks, I swear to God. It's going to catch on. Just wait and see. And, you know, I get to school and I still got my confidence up. I didn't let that phase me. And then all of a sudden I walk into the classroom and I see like 35 judgmental faces. Like, <laughs> what? And I'm like, mm, okay, it's not and that's great. So, you know, sometimes you have to fully commit. And in this case, I did fully commit because I didn't bring a spare pair of clothes. It was 7.30 in the morning and I was going to be wearing that shit until 3 in the afternoon. Like, I was fucking stuck with it. So I tried to play it off like I thought I was cool, but I'm never cool, so that didn't really work. And uh, got home that night. I don't usually let the opinions of others dictate my behavior, but in that case, there was such a unanimous vote that, like, what I was doing was not okay. So I did dispose of not only the Aladdin pants, but also the bodysuit when I got home that night, and they were never to be seen again. And I don't know why, you know, I thought that that would work, because I've never had, especially when I was a kid, I was never very self-confident. I don't know why I took these fashion risks because I'm not, it's not like it ever catches on. It's not like there's somebody who's like, oh, starts the trend, that's Nibby. She's a fucking trendsetter, you know? Like, it's always been kind of half-assed and it never really works out. But part of that was the fact that I had no self-confidence. And when I was a kid, you know, I really thought that I was totally invisible. I was chubby and awkward and I had 
really bad acne, and I eventually got braces, which also didn't help anything. But because of this, I had, I was really boy crazy because I never got any attention from boys. And so I had this long list of crushes like, oh, you know, Macaulay Culkin. Like that was my generation was celebrity crushes or boys on the school bus or boys in my class, you know, and I always had a lot of crushes. And I'm not one of those people who just like shares that information with my family. Like I never wanted my brothers and sisters or my parents to know when I had a crush on a boy because that's kind of creepy, don't you think, for like your dad to know like who you're dreaming of making out with at night? Like isn't that... So I always kept it a secret because I thought I'd get made fun of and I thought it was weird. And uh, I never, you know, I never watched, I watched a lot of TV as a kid. I was a huge TV junkie and I used to get out blank tapes and like record my favorite shows so I could watch them back later. And um, I'd never watched Baywatch. I knew about it because it's such a punchline, you know, Baywatch. Oh, it's all about boobs. It's just boobs like bouncing down the beach, you know. And so I'd never seen it as a kid, but I'd heard about it. And one day I was flipping through channels and I stumbled upon Baywatch and I stopped because there was this like super hunky 12 year old boy who was like a lifeguard on Baywatch. He's like a junior lifeguard and you know, he was all tan and like cut and he had like long luxurious hair and it was totally meant to attract preteen girls to watching Baywatch because preteen girls are like, your ideal audience, They're like a marketing rep's wet dream, you know? <laughs> They've got disposable income, they're easily influenced, and they're the next generation. So as soon as you can start selling them shit, like, the sooner the better. <laughs> so they had this kid on the show who was a junior lifeguard, and I immediately, like, fell in love with this kid. His character's name, first of all, is Hobie. <laughs> what the fuck kind of name is Hobie? Like, I've never looked into it. I've never found out, like, is it short for something? I don't know, but he played David Hasselhoff's son on the show, so it was really convenient for the marketing people to just, like, weave him into the plot line, so then, you know, girls like me, who have money to spend, would watch Baywatch, and I discovered that night that Baywatch was on in syndication. They were showing reruns of it every night on USA. And I fell in love with this kid on Baywatch, so I started taping episodes of Baywatch every night. And I'd like watch the one tape until the, that night's episode was on, and then I'd tape it, and then it would be added into the rotation. It was fucking ridiculous. I was super obsessed with Baywatch. And looking back, like, what did my family think? I mean, I'm 12 years old, I'm watching six hours of Baywatch every day. They probably had a family meeting about it. They were probably like, I mean, they're super cool, non-judgmental people. So, you know, whatever I was into, I'm sure they'd be okay with, but they were probably like, has anybody else noticed that Nimi is watching a lot of Baywatch? Is Nimi obsessed with boobs? Is it time for Nimi to come out? Do you think we should ask her? We probably shouldn't ask her. So, and this never occurred to me until like a year ago, right? Like 15 years later, I'm like, my family probably thought that was weird. Don't you think? Like, I wonder, like, maybe I should clear it up with them the next time I see them. Be like, just so you guys know, because they don't see the 12 year old hunk, they see a bunch of boobs. They walk past the TV and it's just boobs. And I'm like, <laughs> against the TV screen. And by the way, this kid, so in preparing for this bit, I looked him up. His name was Jeremy Jackson. He was a child actor and I looked him up recently. Yeesh. Yeah, he's like one of those like unnaturally tan, oiled up male models. Like really gross. I was like, okay, never mind, never mind. Excuse me, I really need some water. But thank you all for being here. Thank you Murder Cafe for being here because they were fucking amazing. And uh, I haven't been to a show in a long time, so I'm really glad I got to enjoy that as much as I did. But you guys are all here and um, 
if you've noticed, this is an awesomely shitty little house we have here. It's a total slum, which is just what we need. Um, and other than the one complaint we have, which is the 55 gallon barrel of used motor oil that's right behind that tarp. I don't know if you guys are aware, there is a toxic substance in here. And uh, we called the landlord about, like we didn't really notice it when we toured the place because it was behind the door. We came in, we checked out the garage, we're like, this looks fucking awesome, okay, let's go sign a lease. And we move in and we notice that thing and we're like, are they gonna come and get that? Like that's not cool, I don't want that in my garage. And um, we called them and they said that the landlord, the owner of the property is saving it <laughs> for some unspecified future purpose, <laughs> which, oh my God. okay, I'm trying to imagine that. And I'm like getting in a fight with the lady on the phone. I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. Just fuck it. So they just don't want to pay the disposal fee. We don't either. It's going to be like 80 or $100 to get that thing hauled off. So whatever, it can just blend into the scenery. Apparently none of you guys noticed it, so I guess we're in the clear. Um, but our one major problem with this house has been the plumbing. It's a really, it's like an 80, 90 year old house and it's got really narrow pipes and we've had like six or seven major plumbing backups in the one year that we've lived here and um we have the guy come out you know and he like pumps the septic system or whatever they do i don't know what they do but that was clearing up our problems except this one recurring problem which was the shower wasn't draining and i couldn't figure it out like i had pulled up the thing and i couldn't see anything blocking the pipe you know and i'd take a 10 minute shower and it would literally take like 45 minutes for the fucking water to drain out of the shower and so I had Charlie look into it and he gets in there Thank God I have a husband because this is I'm, I can do some shit But this is something I was not willing to do Charlie gets in there and pulls out like Three feet of like a decade worth of soap scum that's built up <laughs> It's not hair like you'd think it's soap scum and it's like built up in the pipe and he gets it all out of there and suddenly the shower drains again. And I'm like, wow, that is so refreshing. And so you know what the first thing I did the next time I took a shower was? Peed in the shower. Because <laughs> you just that can't drain. do that. Yeah, you can't do it if the shower isn't draining. I mean, you know, obviously every time I get in the shower, I immediately want to pee. That's, that's what it is to be a mammal, you know? That's why they have the old sitcom